Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon open topped office tank and tonight I'm just going to do a simple water change and a filter change so we're going to do a simple before and after video here. I will also get in there and check the nitrate levels in this tank. If you follow along regularly with my videos you'll know that I've been keeping uh, an eye on the nitrates in this tank. I have this beautiful uh, German blue ram. It's sold as a long finned German blue but I think there's a little bit more going on in there. I might have some gold genetics or something. I'm not entirely sure. It's a really unusual looking ram, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I have been uh, discussing nitrates and whether or not German blue rams can live in elevated levels of nitrates and so on and so forth. So just as part of this uh, water change, as I'm going to do from now on, whenever I do a water change on this tank, I will also be checking the nitrate levels so we can just sort of keep an eye on them as time progresses and we'll see what happens uh, over the course of time with this fish living in whatever levels of nitrates we wind up seeing it living in over the course of time uh, if that made sense so it's probably going to be around 40 to 50 parts per million somewhere in that neighborhood i just checked them the other day as part of another video and they were not quite at 40 parts per million but that's been three or four days and with all the fish i've gotten there i'm not shy about feeding my uh, fish and with the subdued amount of growth that i'm getting off of my temple plant right there i don't exactly have uh plant growth in there drinking up the nutrients at the moment so we're probably up at 40 parts per million uh, or thereabouts with the nitrates, but we'll find out. So like I said, we're going to go ahead and just do a simple water change, simple filter change, and we'll do a before and after video. So consider this part your before. And there's your after. So I didn't wipe down the glass, but I did do a really significant water change. I did change the filter over and once again the filter was not very clogged but i was not getting very much flow from the filter i don't know if you noticed in the before part of the video how it looked like it was just sort of a trickling waterfall dribbling into the tank well now it's a nice good vigorous thorough flow like it should be and that is because i've got a combination of just a little bit of gunk that builds up in the uh intake right where the impeller is if you pull that apart you'll notice there's a little uh section where the plastic has a little sort of cross pattern and the uh magnet and the impeller and everything go right there that tends to get clogged with just crud that grows in your aquarium over time plus i've got that white water mold that is growing on the plastic inside the filter intakes that wasn't too much i didn't have to clean too much of that out but I did, again, have some of that crud building up around where the impeller is, and that was impeding the flow of water, and that's all cleaned out, and so we've got nice, good, thorough surface agitation, good, vigorous water flow, and everything else. So the tank's all nice and good, but while I was doing the water change, I noticed because the water was so low, and I got kind of distracted uh, doing a couple other things while I was messing around with the filter. I was just sort of letting the tank drain into a five-gallon bucket. And I wound up draining almost five full gallons out of it. And it was already about two gallons low. So after draining a mere five gallons out of this tank, and keep in mind this is a 20-gallon tank, so in theory... That was a 25% water change, but in reality, the water level was reduced all the way down to, you know, a third of the tank almost before I, you know, realized that the bucket was full or close enough to full that I'd certainly drained enough water out of the tank. And so in this particular case, I did both a test of the before water uh, with the nitrates and I did a test of the after water just because of the significance and water change uh, Remember the water was already a couple gallons low. So after I took five gallons out I put about seven gallons back in and I thought that that was going to give me a really Significant difference in the nitrates. I knew my first vial my before vial was going to be fairly red It was probably going to look like around that 40 parts per million. It's kind of tough to tell uh, between 40 and 60 parts per million when you look at that chart and you look at those API test, you know, vials. And so what I wound up with is that. 
Can you tell me which one's the before and after? I mean, I know which one is just because I know which one's on which side, but without holding them in front of the card, you still get the idea that that looks pretty identical. Now, I will say that as these tests sit over time, the colors tend to continue darkening and changing a little bit, so you really do need to read them around the five-minute mark, and we are now probably about the 15-minute mark since I did this test. So that contributes to why they look so similar. Uh, at the five minute mark when I looked at them, the beginning one, the before vial, was clearly red. I would have put it, if I held it up to the paper, which I did, uh, I would have put it around the 40 parts per million, maybe a little on the high side of 40 parts per million. And the after, I honestly would have put just a little on the low side of 40 parts per million. It was still sort of orangey red, but not quite red yet. And, you know, from the size of the water change and everything I did, it just makes me scratch my head. I've shot videos in the past about these API um, nitrates uh, test kits. They really do just sort of give you a ballpark sort of figure. Once that vial starts turning sort of reddish, which to me seems to happen around 30 parts per million or so, you start getting into that red territory, you've got to have a really, really good eye for color to be able to distinguish the shades of red between 40, 60, you know, 70 parts per million. I just don't know how you can really differentiate those parts. And again, it's not something I ever really worry about. It's, again, um, you know, I've mentioned before, I don't really think nitrates are that uh, dangerous to our fish. I think that's a bit of a aquarium hobby boogeyman. And I really, I know I keep saying this, but I really will shoot that video one of these days, I promise. Um, I've shot videos about it in the past. It's not like I've never talked about this before. It's just the controversy that it stirs up every time I do talk about it. And I just generally am not in the mood, uh, to deal with the comments and everything that I get from it because I just, I honestly just don't care. So I guess I could just ignore all the comments that I don't care about and just get on with shooting the video anyway or something. I don't know, but we'll talk about it. Another thing I want to talk about is nitrate shock. Uh, what I thought we were going to see with my... Uh, before and after vials, I thought we were going to see a red vial and then a yellowy tan vial. You know, I thought we were going to see the significant uh, difference between the before and after. And if that was the case, that would have been a good segue for me to uh, open up the discussion about nitrate shock because that is also something I want to talk about. And I'll throw out there, uh, it's not something I think is a real thing. I think it's just... I don't know, it's just one of them things people have come up with as a good reason, sort of a good excuse, or perhaps there's some reasons people believe it, but it's not founded in any kind of solid science that I've ever seen. And again, if you've got some solid science that talks about it, I'd love to hear from you, so please give me a link or something down below. And, you know, I know everybody says so. I'm not asking for comments about how everybody says so. If you've got any, you know, scientific links about what nitrates do or how nitrate shock affects the fish and what it does to them, uh, I'd love to hear from you and I would love to see a link to uh, some sort of scientific study or research or something like that that supports that idea. So far, I have yet to find it and believe me, I have looked. So we will talk more about that. Uh, in the meantime, you got a good look at the before and the after on this tank. You got a good look once again at the nitrates. Remember everybody, this is the after. This is what that fish is sitting in right now. This is after my big seven-gallon water change. You know, I took five out and put seven back in. Um, and, you know, we're still sitting right there. And, you know, as you can see, he still just looks fantastic, good and healthy. And I put a few nummies in the tank right before I started shooting so everybody would be active and running around and feeding. And you can see within, you know, 15 minutes of a water change, he's already around pecking for food and feeding off the surface. Uh, really fantastic fish. I'm really glad I took the leap. Uh, and tried this one again. I was really reluctant to do it. I thought they were really sensitive fish. I've listened to what so many people have said over the years about how, you know, they'll just die if you don't keep them in really, really pristine water. Um, you know, I decided to take the chance that the idea of just keeping them in nice warm water was the key to keeping them healthy. And so far, that certainly seems to be the case. I've got this tank set at 30 degrees, uh, so we're in the mid-80s and the tank is plenty warm enough that this fish seems to be doing fine. Every other time I've kept these uh, German Blue Rams, I always, never took that warm thing seriously. I always kept them in my tanks that were suited to my other fish, you know, 77, 78 degrees, and I never kept a GBR alive for more than a week or two, and eventually I just gave up on them. 
Uh, and now that I've had this one in this nice warm tank, it's just thriving and it looks fantastic. And it's, I don't even know how long I've had it now, probably a couple of months or something like that. So there you go. There's my before and after. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. And again, I'd love to hear any comments or thoughts you've got on the nitrate thing. And I'd really prefer to see something that's, you know, scientifically supported uh, rather than uh, everybody says so, because I obviously know that everybody says so. I just happen to disagree with most of those people. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss any of the stuff I got coming up uh, or anything else that's going to be happening around here or downstairs in my fish room. And then don't forget, of course, this is my 20-gallon open-top office tank. So thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.